Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond. Welcome back to the YouTube video. We're still looking at some Try Hack Me, and I want to continue off of the steam of yesterday's video where we took a look at Overpass. Now I want to showcase Overpass 2 Hacked. This room has been out for just a few days. I think my face is in the way, but it's four days old at the time of recording. Uh, I've gone through the room already, so forgive me. The answers are kind of in the Try Hack Me prompts. But hey, let's dive in. It says, Overpass has been hacked. Can you analyze the attacker's action and hack back in? So it says here, forensics, analyze the PCAP. Let's open that tab up. And it says, overpass has been hacked. The SOC team, or Security Operations Center team, Paradox, congratulations on the promotion, noticed suspicious activity on a late night shift while looking at whatever that is. And managed to capture packets as the attack happened. Can you work out how the attacker got in and hack your way back into the overpass production server? Although this room is a walkthrough, it expects familiarity with tools and Linux. Some good stuff. Okay, and it gives us a PCAP file to download, so I will download that. And let me hop over and make a directory, YouTube Overpass 2. Let's hop into that. And we've downloaded that PCAP already, so let's actually just make a directory PCAP, and let's move that downloads overpass in here. That is a PCAP NG file or PCAP next generation. Um, I don't like to work with those because Scapey doesn't like to work with those, I think, from the last time I checked. So just for safety, I tend to change that into a regular PCAP. Um, you can do that with edit cap. If you don't have edit cap, it's uh, part of the Wireshark hyphen common. I'm mistype and everything already and the video has like not even started so if you want to install that you can edit cap just to create overpass 2 overpass 2 pcap on its own without that pcap ng okay so let's fire that up in wireshark just to take a look at it overpass 2 pcap and we have a lot of seemingly HTTP packets to kind of start with. Looking over on the side menu here, we have some other TCP things. But the first question is, what was the URL of the page that they used to upload a reverse shell? That looks like, checking out the first couple of packets here, they make a get request to slash development. I'll go ahead and follow that TCP stream just so I can see what they do here. And it looks like they just get the development page. Nothing else interesting in there. They do post here. So let's check that out to an upload page, upload, and it looks like they're sending a file payload.php, which is peculiar. And this syntax is definitely trying to have PHP execute a shell command, which, and this is clearly boilerplate, for a regular bash reverse shell. Okay, so that answers a couple questions uh, off the bat. This slash development slash page is kind of the format that Try Hack Me asked for, so that's what I ended up putting in. I think that original get request is actually a redirect, right? If I see the HTTP stream, where does that bring them? Does it just put them in? Yeah, yeah, okay, upload. So upload is the post form or like action that that's going to where they upload this file. What is that? Miri tells me this is insecure. I only heard PHP this week, so maybe I should let him fix it. Something about PHP INI. <laughs> I like that a lot. The PHP configuration file, the .ini file. Okay, cool. So development is that answer and the payload the attacker used to gain access. We just saw that entire syntax in that post request there. It's the PHP exec with that bash session. It said, what password did the attacker use to privesc? So... While we've seen that post, just after that, he starts to get that uploads. And then we also see him try to get this uploads payload.php, which is what he just uploaded. So that's a simple get request. But then after that, we make some TCP connections. And since this is all through a kind of bare bones, simple, like netcat reverse shell with bash, we can see all of that kind of in clear text. So we can see the conversation from the client and the server. Um, client in this case is actually the server and at least according to Wireshark here, the server being the victim and the attacker being in blue, right? Okay, so he just checks who he is, ID, he's running his dub dub data, then he elevates his shell to get a more stable bin bash and checks out overpass. Okay, cool. And then he's able to grab the password for the James user and he changes into that user with whenever not ear Tencent. What? Whatever. That is the password that he used to privesc into James. 
How did the attacker establish persistence? So we can go back to the conversation here. See, he commands that he ran. Okay, he catted out at set Rashado. So we actually have some password hashes. That's kind of useful. Let's copy that just to have it. Um, let me actually just make another one here. I will subble. I guess Shadow is a better name for that. Slap those in so we can save them. I don't need this other post request. So let me close that window and we'll keep looking. Now we git clone GitHub Ninja's account and SSH backdoor. Interesting. So he grabs that project and package. He moves into that, generates a key, public and private key to use and saves it as IDRSA. Okay, and then he runs this backdoor program. Seemingly that's part of that. It also has a TAC A interesting thing. Uh, oddball, if you take a look at kind of the format of the answer that TriHackMe is asking for, you will see the colon slash slash and the notes there. So that will indicate, okay, that GitHub link is what he was using, this utility and tool that will actually allow him to grab uh, and make persistence with an SSH backdoor. Using the fast track word list, how many of the system passwords were crackable? Mm. I have not actually used the fast track word list before, so I ended up going to download it. I just kind of found it here, and I just simply copy and pasted all this and made a file. Uh, again, in my opt directory. So now, alongside of RockU, we have this opt fast track file, and that has all those passwords. So let's get started on trying to crack some of those passwords. And thankfully, we saved that. We saved that. Excuse me. In Shadow. So let's use John the Ripper for that. So all opt run from John the Ripper, John and shadow is the file that we want. And we'll specify a word list and we'll use that fast track list that they just suggested we use. Okay. So I probably still have a lot of those already present in my uh, John list. So if I use tac tac show, okay, yeah, these are everything that is already cracked. Where's that john.pot file? Do they store it in my home directory or like in John the Ripper run? I'm just going to locate that file real quick. Sorry. Hope you don't mind. John.pot. Yeah, that guy. Okay, let's let's just nerf him so I can run that command one more time for you. And I don't need show in that case. So it'll actually just pump out all those passwords that it was able to crack real quick and easy. Okay. So there are four, right? There are four passwords that we were able to crack. Let's go ahead and submit that as our answer four. Great. Now, because we know this SSH backdoor, we move into a second phase here and it wants us to analyze this backdoor. So we can go ahead and clone that repository. Let me git clone that guy. Pull that down, because that's a real thing, right? If I were to hop over to GitHub, that's a legitimate project that Ninja had put together. So kudos to you. Very neat, very neat. Let's explore what's in here. We have the backdoor as a binary itself. We have a build script. Build, please. Pseudo for cabinet bined. Oh, okay. And we have the server if it wants to work with that. The source code is main.go. Read me we just saw on GitHub. What is in that setup script? Okay, just getting all the libraries that are necessary to work with and go and creating a little SSH keygen. Easy enough. Let's check out that source code. Okay, so examining this, regular Golang, kind of just what we looked at previously in the old overpass room. It has a var hash as a string. What is that? Checking out the main function, we have a local port to listen on, quad two, L host. So we're gonna listen on everything, bind all interfaces, key path, okay, our IDRSA, and just add a regular SSH banner. Looks like Flaggy is that module used to actually carve out and then retrieve the command line arguments that we passed to this program. Then we set a little prefix with SSH for logging. Good. Reading private key and starts a simple SSH server there. Easy enough. Okay, then we verify the password. That's another function we could use. And it uses a salt. Ah, okay, so that looks like it's passed in as an argument. 
Same thing with hash password, they use that. And we're looking with SHA-512 hashes. Good to know. SSH handler, okay. Simple SSH session, same thing with an SSH terminal. That's kind of cool that Go can just like wrap around SSH as needed with those libraries. Again, makes me want to learn and be better at Go. <laughs> okay, password handler actually calls this verify pass function. It looks like that argument, the second argument here, is going to take the place of the salt. So going back to the try hack me questions, what are we looking at? The default hash is that one at the very, very top of the source code that we saw previously. Um, the hash is, or excuse me, the salt is just this line here. You can see it, that's being passed and that's the hard coded salt for the back door. And now what was the hash the attacker used? You can go back to the PCAP for this. So I still have that. And that was that weird backdoor tack A that's specified. We could copy that and slap that in as the answer for number three. Um, that you will know specifically with kind of the options here that Flag is using hash A as the argument or the command line kind of parameter and tag to use for that. Okay. The next part is interesting. It asks us to crack the hash using Rocku and a cracking tool of your choice. So Rocku being Rocku.txt, that giant dictionary word list, and a cracking tool of your choice. So I kind of fumbled with this. Uh, I had not previously uh, worked with a regular SHA-512 hash with a salt um, that I needed to crack, right? That's just kind of, normally you get easy, cheesy, stupid, like, et cetera, shadow, et cetera, password things to crack. And I can run through that with John the Ripper. Uh, this time I needed to use Hashcat or I wanted to use Hashcat because I just wasn't getting it right with John the Ripper. So I went ahead and installed Hashcat. That is, uh, if you don't know, sudo apt install Hashcat. And you could certainly get it from the repositories. I don't exactly know what version this Hashcat one is on. Hashcat, do I get a version with tag tag version? Yeah, okay, whatever, 5.1.0, slick. So we have all this code. We have the hash that they use, and let me try and crack their password. Let's prepare that. I just wanna get all this info. So I'm just gonna save this as whatever, like hash, I guess. And we also know the salt. That is uh, this guy here. So we need both of these key ingredients to be able to crack that hash, right? actually figure out the password that was used here. I needed to learn a little bit of Hashcat methods um, because Hashcat will do a lot of interesting and peculiar things and it can hash crack a lot of different hashes. Um, but it has a lot of command line arguments and I am not super duper smart on this. So I had to go take a look, what can I use to crack SHA-512 hashes that also include a salt? Looks like if I keep searching for these, I see syntax where you use a pass and a salt and SHA-512. That's what it's just gonna end up being. That mode or kind of the method that it has to use with the tack M argument is 1710. I guess you could do that in reverse order if for some reason you wanted to or other elements and things that you might need. But that's what I ended up just working with. So let's build that out. If I were to run hashcat, I specify that 1710, and now I need to supply the hash arguments there. It also whines on my computer. Um, I have to use tac -tac force for it to actually work with things, um, but it isn't able to load hashes here because I obviously haven't provided them. So with that kind of specification using 1710, we have the pass, the hash itself first, and a period, and then the salt to work with. So, Let's just grab these and slap them in. I'm going to paste in this blob here, and then I will paste in just as well this other hash as with that salt included. So I'll run this, and the separator unmatch, mm, I kind of fumbled with this a little bit as well. I think I needed to specify like some user or a colon here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, this actually already found it. So it is the colon that I have to specify, not a period. And tac tac show is already going to display these. Do I have like a hashcat.pot file? Is that a thing? Hashcat pot? Yeah, 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 yeah. So let me nerf that guy. So it'll actually run and crack again. But of course, I need to actually specify a word list. So let's use opt rocku.txt as the last argument to run for hashcat. And then let's see if he will start to work through it. 
It looks like Hashcat kind of needs to kickstart, figure everything out on my computer. And then it goes through and it says, okay, I've already cracked it. So pretty good, I think. Uh, running this again, it gives me that error like, hey, we already did this. All the hashes are found in the pot file. You can use TacTac show to display them. So I'll do that. I'll use tac tac show and remove the word list and it tells me that this hash with that salt has been cracked to the password november 16 so that's it that's the password that was that syntax that i need to use with hashcat just hack m specifying the mode and the uh hash or the pass and the salt right okay slap that in get your points for november 16 and now let's get to the phase three now that the incident is investigated, Paradox needs someone to take control of the Overpass production server again. There's flags in the box that Overpass can't afford to lose by formatting the server. So let's go ahead and deploy this machine. I guess it will take a little bit, so my bad. I will have to wait on that. I'll just pause the video as we get started. Alrighty, now our machine is up. So we have an IP address. Let me just kind of sanity check and make sure I can ping that guy. Yep, I can. Okay. Let's close out a Wireshark because I don't think we particularly need that anymore. But it says the attacker defaced the website. What message did they leave behind as a heading? So let's go visit that in a web browser. And it says simply hacked by Cooktus Clan with that adorable image of a cactus eating a cookie. Fantastic. Now we need to get back into the server. Okay. So we know there's an SSH backdoor. We know from the source code that this is running on quad two as a local port. And if you wanted to, we could do a simple nmap. Uh, let me make just completely out of habit, right? Let's do a simple nmap, tac sc, tac sv, tac on, nmap, initial on that IP address. And it'll come back and tell us that, okay, port 2222 is open. <laughs> so we can connect to that. And we know that there was the James user that that account or that kind of a hacker was, was working in. So let's go ahead and SSH tac p quad two to that IP address with James as the account. From what I've seen, it actually doesn't matter what user you connect as. It's just checking that password. And we know the password as we just cracked it with Hashcat is November 16. All right, okay, check it out. We are on the server back as James. And we are in the directory where they stored and started this SSH backdoor. So we have the private key, we have all the code, we have the backdoor service, we have some interesting things here. But let's go to his home directory because that's where the good stuff is, user.txt. Simply cat that out. And there is that flag. We could go ahead and submit that, paste that in there, get your points. And now we need to know what is the root flag, okay? So I thought going through this, because obviously we could just run like linps, we could run linenum, we could do whatever enumeration we want to do. Uh, but a man, a, again, like immediate, quick, low-hanging fruit, will November 16 work as a password for the James user? Can I log in or switch to some of the other passwords that we cracked earlier? I wasn't able to log in with any of those, admittedly. I couldn't switch user to Psy or anything. Um, so I thought like, well, maybe he still has passwords in that dot overpass file. So I started to look with an LS tac LA to if I could grab that overpass file, but obviously immediately it should catch your eye. We have a red suid bash program here. It's owned by root and it's a set UID binary. So very, very likely this will be our quick route to root. Maybe the attacker just left this in here so they have a quick and easy privesk. Uh, we could just simply run like a dot slash suid bash. Uh, if I invoke it ju with just that, I won't get my effective user ID as root. Uh, because it's bash, right? You need to invoke it with that tac p argument so you keep your permissions and your privileges. Now when I check out ID, my effective user ID is root. And you can see my prompt here with little hashtag pound symbol octothorpe. That's the real scientific word, man. Check it out. I am in fact root. So we can hop on over to the root directory and we have control over this system so we can do anything we really want to. But for the proof of that, the proof is in the pudding. Let's grab root.txt and submit that. Done. Great. Holy cow. 
all the questions answered, all the tasks complete, analyze the PCAP to kind of do some investigation and figure out how what was done and how they got in and simple reverse shell you could see kind of in clear text same thing with okay analyzing the code because we were able to just pull down the tool that the attacker used kind of neat kind of cool reverse engineer that go language not there wasn't much to reverse engineer it just read through the source code and make sense of it but uh jumping back in and kind of seeing what the hacker left in their traces so Cool. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I think that one was kind of fun. Overpass had a lot of really neat, interesting tricks in it. And it was kind of cool to take a different perspective in this case to kind of analyze some else and other work and other things. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do do those YouTube algorithm things. You know I love you so much for that. Like, comment, subscribe. Algorithm things. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. With the puppies, 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 with the puppies,